Hello citizens and welcome back. In this video I would like to show you new features of the armory that I added since the last update, talk about future plans and by popular demand give you a complete guide on how to use the armory. As always, if you like this video, sacrifice a like and a comment to the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more. And here's a shout out to our amazing patrons for their support of the channel and the armory. I'm going to start the video with a complete guide on how to use the armory including all features, so I will let live recording Space Coder take it away. Thank you Studio Space Coder. I'm going to show you how to use the armory including all the features. So this is your main armory screen. This is what you're going to see the first time you open the armory. So this main screen lets you build out the loadout that you would like to have or you would like to look up. So I'm going to select an undersuit and a helmet. And now I'm going to start looking for some armor. If you need you can also search for specific items by typing into the text field. Here you can see that if you select the core piece first, the armory will automatically fill in the arms and the legs from the same color and armor set. Selecting a core armor will enable selecting a backpack. Backpack sizes are bound to the size of the core, so if you're wearing a light core it will only let you wear a light backpack. If you're wearing a medium core you can wear medium backpacks or light backpacks and heavy cores will let you wear any backpack. You can also select weapons. The armory will validate and show you how many weapons you can carry depending on the armor you have selected. So right now I have a light armor selected so I can only carry a sidearm and a primary weapon. So I will now select a weapon. This will bring up the weapon attachment fields which will also validate depending on what attachments the weapon will take. You can also select the tool which currently lets you select the knife, the multi-tool and the medical tool which currently all fall into the utility slot on your armor. And this is your loadout all set. What you can do now is actually add additional gear, which just lets you add any consumables, utility items, that kind of stuff. So more tools, knives, crypto keys, met pens. The number of these is not validated in any way, so you can select as many as you want. So before I show you the shopping list, I'm going to show you the advanced information tab. This will show you more detailed information about the current loadout. This includes how much inventory space it will take in case you need to transport this loadout in a ship, how much inventory space it has, temperature resistances, damage reduction and how many ports for weapons, ammo and utilities it has. Some of these can be displayed by items so you can figure out which item is reducing your resistance or your damage reduction. Moving on to the weapons tab. Here you will see advanced information about the weapons you have currently equipped, including range, type, alpha damage and magazine capacity. You can also read the in-game description of the weapon. This is the actual in-game description, however the values listed in it can sometimes be different than the actual range of the weapon. Then you also have the damage over distance graph, which shows you how much damage you're losing depending on how far you're shooting. It also shows all the damage types that a certain weapon will do. For example, this sniper rifle has three damage types, energy, stun and distortion. The armory will also let you preview images of some of the gear. It doesn't have images for everything, but images can be submitted. The weapon showcase is currently done through a video, however in the future I will probably also add images. Ok, so now let's take a look at the shopping list. The shopping list, as the name suggests, is going to show you where to buy the gear you have selected. It will also show you with some degree of accuracy where the equipment can be looted. The shopping list will show you the estimated price of all the gear you have selected. This is estimated based on the fresh server price of the equipment. You can also mark all the items you have already purchased. This will help you find the next location to go to. The shopping list and the loot list can get quite long depending on how many items you have selected. Once we have more systems in game I will probably try to make it so it only shows the locations closest to you. Finally you can export the shopping list as text. You can either save this or share this with your friends, whatever you need to do. And that's it. Uh, back to you Studio Coder. Thank you Live Recording Space Coder, hope that wasn't too chaotic for you guys. Now let's move on to new features implemented since the last video update. You might have noticed the first one during the presentation already. When you select a core piece of armor, the armory will now automatically fill out the arms and the legs from the same set and color. You can of course override the selection if you wish. This was a highly requested feature and was actually enabled thanks to the major refactor that we did. The second major feature added color invariant search for weapons. I realized that when looking for a particular weapon, usually users don't care about a specific color scheme if there are multiple. So it made sense to me to add an option to search for any variant of the selected weapon. 
This should yield more locations and thus enable you to find the one closest to you. Now, I know this doesn't sound like a lot, but these are just the things that users can see. In fact, a large portion of the armory was rewritten in the meantime to improve the quality of the code, increase performance and make it compatible with new technologies down the line, which will happen very soon when we update the armory to use React 18. Which brings me to the plans for the next quarter or so. First, we are considering implementing a cache between the armory and the API it's using. This would likely improve performance and would also allow us to make some data operations a bit easier. But we still have to explore this plan as it might have some hidden issues. Second, as you know, it is possible for users to submit gear images to be shown in the armory. Currently, the process happens through a Google form and it requires quite a bit of manual input and validation from my side. This is not ideal. So my plan is to build a separate service that will collect this information instead and allow me to modify and approve it as needed and then automatically upload it to where it needs to be. This will save me a lot of work in the long run and could allow me to track and reward people who submit the most information. Which brings me to my final point. I recently discovered some minor differences between item locations listed in the game files and what actually happens in game. There are a couple of reasons why this could be. However, this combined with the fact that persistent entity streaming and by extension server meshing is approaching release, makes me think that CAG will slowly move away from storing item sale locations in the game files. This is a major problem, as this is the primary source of information used by the armory. However, the solution is actually fairly simple. I will extend the service mentioned in the previous point to also accept information on item sale locations. This will give me an easy way to fix inconsistencies in the short term and in the long term will become the main source of information until CAG give us an API to use. There are also a number of small feature requests that I will try to tackle as I have time between working on the big stuff. But the three things mentioned are the main targets for now. And with that being said, that's it for tonight. Thank you for watching and supporting the Armory. If you have any questions or feature requests, drop them in the comments or on Discord. Fly safe and I will see you in the verse.